Today, I've got something really exciting for you, an entirely free open source Kubernetes IDE that rivals a popular Lens application without any paid nags or subscriptions. It's called FreeLens, and in this video, I will walk you through everything you need to know from what FreeLens is to its standout features, extensions, installation steps, and real-world use cases in your home lab or production environment. So let's dive in. And now a word about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Nakivo. Are you looking for a powerful and reliable backup solution for your home lab or enterprise environment? Look no further than Nakivo Backup and Replication. Nakivo is an excellent data protection software that offers comprehensive backup and recovery options and lets you use your NAS or a simple VM deployment as a backup appliance. Nakivo supports a wide range of environments, including Proxmox VE, VMware, Hyper-V, Nutanix, KVM, and EC2 instances, along with SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365. Plus, they offer a free version for up to 10 VMs, and that makes it an ideal choice for both home lab setups and enterprise backups. So what is FreeLens? Well, Lens has been the gold standard for quite some time for a slick Kubernetes GUI, but it went commercial and the free open Lens repo stopped receiving updates. That's where FreeLens steps in. Written in TypeScript, FreeLens aims to recreate the Lens interface and extend it all under an Apache 2 license. It ships as native binaries for macOS, both the Intel and Apple silicon, as well as Windows, x64, and ARM64, and all the popular Linux packaging formats, including AppImage, Flatpak, Snap, Deb, RPM, and others. So you can just drop it on your workstation or even a Jumpbox VM without missing a beat. Now, what are the key features of FreeLens? Well, some of the things to, that are worth mentioning include a bundled tool chain, which comes pre-packaged with kubectl version 1.33, Helm version 3.18, plus a lightweight Go proxy. Zero external dependencies are needed. As for stability and security, as of version 1.3.2, which was released June the 9th, 2025, Electron is bumped to Chrome 134 and critical CVE patches are in place. So it looks like the developers are serious about security with this one. It has persistent terminals and cleaner YAML dumps. Terminals stay alive across sessions and YAML exports look neat and clean. It has automatic proxy restarts. If the chosen port is busy, FreeLens smartly restarts a proxy so you'll never get blocked. Also, it features live metrics in pod tables, version 1.3.1, which gives you CPU and memory columns that update with live metrics. And one of the nice things with this is the monitoring that you get. If you go to your cluster settings and navigate to metrics, you're going to see that the metrics can be driven from Prometheus. So you can have the drop down, you can choose various versions of Prometheus. I'm going to show you how to install this with Helm. Basically, we just update our Helm repo, and then here we're installing the Prometheus Community Kube Prometheus Stack. So once you install that, you're going to start getting streaming metrics from your Kubernetes cluster. So you can see here we've got memory, disk metrics, CPU takes just a little bit longer to start coming in. But once we have those in, in place, we get these really nice graphical interfaces for metrics. It has namespace deletion prompts and smart key sorting. Fewer surprises and the built-in editor is extremely intuitive. It also has the ability to pin port forward addresses. You can bind to any local address, not just local host, which is handy for demos. Also with no draining and shell access, it supports cluster version 1.31 plus draining. It has auto detection of Helm repos, no more manual repo configurations, free lens finds them all for you. Now, what about extensions and plugin architecture? I really like the fact that this includes the plugin architecture that it does. So like something like VS Code, free lens supports plugins. You build them with PNPM and drop the tarball into the free lens extension folder. Now, my favorite is the Flux CD dashboard plugin where you can overlay your home releases and customizations right in the sidebar 
and reconcile or suspend them without touching a terminal. Community add-ons also include Argo CD views, CRD inspectors, and node-level pod menus, all running safely in the Electron Sandbox, which, for your information as well, requires no extra RBAC or CRDs on the cluster side. Now, what about installing Freelance on your workstation? Well, this is a simple point-and-click installation process. On macOS, you can download the DMG or package file, drag the app to applications, launch, and import your kube config. On Windows, you can grab the signed MSI or XE file, and Winget users can simply run Winget install Freelance, which I love. Also, on Linux, it's available in Fedora, Debian 12 Plus, Ubuntu 22.04 Plus, Arch, and Flatpak. Or you can download the app image, run change mod plus X and just simply launch. So to download in a browser, just search for free lens download. And the first hit that you're likely going to hit on is the official GitHub repository. And here we can see free lens and the free lens app. So scrolling down, you see a really nice preview of what the interface looks like and also the description for the project, which we've covered most of the details there, but definitely check that out. If you go over to the right on the releases section, you're going to find the latest release at the time of the video is 1.4.0. I really like the fact that just two weeks ago, we see all of these enhancements, improvements, and changes that have been made to Freelance. So definitely a active project. So I'm scrolling all the way down here and we're going to grab the AMD64 executable file to install Freelance on our Windows workstation, just as an example here. And also, as we mentioned, definitely you can use Winget. Winget is kind of my tool of choice for Windows, for sure, uh, for installations. But here, if we just launch the exe file, we just have the simple next, next finish type installer that we're all used to in Windows. So the freelance setup just requires a couple of next there, and you just simply click finish and it's going to launch Freelens if you leave that checked as the default. So Freelens, once it launches, you're going to see the interface and it's going to read any kube configs that you already have in place. The first run experience and UI are also very pleasing with Freelens. At launch, Freelens scans your kube config context and builds a hotbar for quick cluster switching. Each cluster gets its own tabbed view with sections uh, for things like global overview, which includes nodes, namespaces, CRDs, and health, uh, workloads, which includes your deployments, stateful sets, daemon sets, jobs, and network gives you visibility on services, ingress, network policies, storage, of course, you get views of PBCs, volume snapshots, CSI objects, Helm releases show you what you have available for upgrade or rollback charts, the logs and shell, uh, gives you in-app tailing and shell access to your pods. Every table also has fuzzy search and column filters, which makes it really easy to find things. You can right-click a pod to scale, cordon, exec, or open the YAML editor for that particular pod. Now, it also includes multi-cluster hotbars and workspaces. Now, I really like this feature on the earlier versions of Lens, and I'm glad to see that Freelens has this as well. So if you have different kube config files, uh, Freelens allows you to group these into context or workspaces. Uh, you can change one kube config entry, and that update flows across all clusters in the namespace. Uh, you can also favorite your namespaces or workloads on the hotbar for an at-a-glance status. And it's perfect for things like keeping up with production as well as dev in parallel. Now, we've already mentioned some of the security highlights as of recently, some of the patches and updates that the application received. However, uh, Freelens also has security as a focus to the tool. It enforces RBAC from your kube config file, no privilege escalation. Terminal shells launch via the bundled proxy, so it never injects external scripts into the pods. And that's something even the paid version of Lens actually does. And with Electron 35's hardened sandbox and Chrome's version 8 CVE patches, you're protected from vulnerabilities recently like CVE 2025-5419 and CVE 2025-4664. Now, let's talk about a brief comparison of free lens versus lens. And I'm going to place up a table onto the view so we can kind of talk through some of the comparisons between the paid versions of, of lens as well as free lens. 
So in terms of our comparison table, we're comparing free lens 1.3 slash 1.4 with lens 6.x. And in the notes column, you can see notes that we have in favor of free lens. Noticing the license, we can see that free lens is 100% free. Lens is also a free product, but you also have the pay nags from time to time, especially when you launch the product. However, I will say it's fairly decent of not being overly intrusive from that perspective. The Teams add-on is, I believe what they call it, is only available in the paid version. So if you're collaborating with a team of engineers, of course, they make that version, the paid version, appealing from the lens perspective. Also, we can see it's bundled with kubectl and Helm there with free lens. We also have more open source extensions. Lens has some, but most may be paid that you would have to purchase to integrate with Lens. Any can correct me if I'm wrong there in the community. Uh, so there's no marketplace paywalls for the free Lens extensions. The Node shell as well, Windows shell is built in. You can have flexible demos and testing with their port forward UI functionality. And then also the release cadence looks really good with free Lens. Uh, actually, from a security perspective, it looks like they are really taking these monthly CVE patches very seriously, so really shows a stable, mature product. Again, I think this is a great tool for home lab use cases along with production and other environments. I really like the extensions, uh, especially if you're learning GitOps using the Flux CVE extension against a private repo and watch reconciliations live. No. CLI required uh, as you would have to do otherwise. On demo days, one of the cool features, you can scale deployments live with uh, right-click functionality and you can have Grafana and browser updates in real time, perfect for presentations. And also the pinning the port forwards, as we mentioned earlier, is really great for demos as well. Now, troubleshooting your pods, you can easily filter your view for those pods that are in crash loop back off state and that makes it really easy to find problematic pods that you have crashing and other things going on there. So it really helps with troubleshooting. You can also patch environment variables in the built-in editor and redeploy all without leaving the free lens GUI. Now, I really like the fact when looking at the roadmap and the community involvement that this project is an active project. You really like to see that with open source projects that we come to love or maybe are using in the home lab. It's frustrating when you find that one you really love, but the last commit was like two years ago. But not with this one. It seems like the community is buzzing with over uh, 2,000 stars in its first year. Freelance momentum seems to be strong. They've got a Discord channel and, again, active updates. So that looks really promising. So there you have it, Freelance, the free open source Kubernetes IDE that gives you everything you love about Lens. Uh, minus the subscription or the nags that you get in something like Lens. So do give free Lens a try. I've linked the GitHub repo below where you can grab the installer and point it at your kubeconfig. And don't forget to install that Flux CD extension or Argo CD or any of the others that you want to try out, especially if you're into GitOps or learning that. It's a really nice feature that that affords you to have. Well, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to stay up to date on all things virtualization, DevOps, cloud computing, home labs, and you name it. We're going to cover it at some point here. Well, drop your questions or thoughts about FreeLens in the comments and what feature you're most excited about. Or is there another tool that you know and love and really enjoy using with your Kubernetes clusters that you self-host in your home lab? Well, do stay safe out there. Keep on home labbing. And I will see you in the next video.